What's up, y'all? Welcome back to 10 Minutes Ago. I'm your host, an omniscient pack of floating cigarettes. Hello. It's time for a review of the new and eagerly anticipated third solo studio album by Mr. Jack White. It's time for a review of the new Jack White album, Boarding House Reach. This time I'm featuring the third studio album by Jack White titled Boarding House Reach on Third Man Records from 2018. Boarding House Reach. It's called Boarding House Reach. Boarding House Reach. Overall, I would definitely say that for the most part, this is a successful experiment for Jack White. Do I hope that he will return to some of his roots more in the future, some more bluesy stuff, some more alternative and guitar-driven stuff? Absolutely, but there's nothing wrong with experimenting on this record in this style. I think that he does pull it off. I hope he goes against this sound completely with future material. Even though I've not really liked his previous stuff, this is just not working either. Overall though, despite all the missteps that I feel Jack took on this record, I do kind of respect its intent. I just feel like it wasn't really pulled off in a way that's genuinely, lastingly compelling. In the four years since Lazaretto, I'd have hoped and expected White would have delivered something far more cohesive than this. I, I don't know, just something just clicked about this for me that uh, now I'm excited to kind of go back in, check out more of Jack White. Normally when there's an album that I just really don't like or care for, I'm sure that there is an audience for it. And I'm sure there is an audience for this too, but it seems like it's going to be few and far between. And for me, this album is also proof that whether or not rock music is refreshing or is pushing the envelope is dependent wholly on whether or not the artist is willing to take it there. Now, for me, there was enough to save it in terms of groove and good ideas, and then an extremely light six out of 10, but man alive, it is not for everybody. It might prove to be Jack White's most challenging listen to date. I can't even call much of this wacky because, I mean, that implies it's exciting. It's not, but it sure tries to be. And even in White's voice, he sounds doubtful of the end result. Four out of 10. For me personally, I'm gonna give this a strong 3.5 out of five. It could be upgraded to a light four at some point, but for now, I think I'm gonna keep it 3.5. So I'm giving Border House Reach an X rating of three out of 10. It's far and away the weakest thing that Jack White has ever released, an impossible front runner for worst album of the year. Yeah, this is an E. This is really bad. I just don't ever wanna to listen to this again. Love this record, great record, fantastic record, feeling a decent too strong nine on this album. Hey guys, this is a little uh, explanation how we do one of the exercises in the Boxer's Book of Conditioning. It's actually the boarding house reach. You're gonna find that on page 57. Jack White, a revolutionary musical artist, Jack Black's evil twin brother, and the man responsible for your shitty cousin's favorite bass riff. No secret here, the reason that his name sprung back into my mind recently is probably the reason that you guys had his name in your mouth recently too. As you know, Jack White just released his first of two albums to be released in 2022, being Fear of the Dawn on April 8th. And I'm a fan, it sent me back to the distant past to play these shitty games that suck ass. But this video is on another one of his albums. If you want my full in-depth thoughts on Fear of the Dawn, I put out a, about a 20-ish minute video on my Patreon. If you're just hanging on my dying breath, just yearning to know what I thought of the brand new Malibu Ken album. Get it, cause his, his hair is... Funny. Funny. Like I mentioned, Jack White's been on my noodle for the past few weeks because of his new album. And I'll spoil the Patreon here, but I was a very big fan of it. I probably shouldn't have been surprised with the singles, but it was much harder than his other material. It's like the hardest songs off of the White Stripes found out what acid was. But I couldn't shake this feeling, this desire, to return to my favorite Jack White album. An emotionally potent album for me, and something I can pretty confidently say is up there with my top 10 favorite albums of all time. That's right, we're talking about Boarding House Reach. Fuck you, I'm doing it. I am blatantly aware that I'm all red everything right now, but, you know, that's just how it turned out. So I'm going to switch the hue to blue real quick, just so Jack White doesn't get upset with me when I'm reviewing his album in a color other than blue. A lot of red right now, but I am, if not a man of the people, a people pleaser, if you will. Allow me to send you back to the not-so-distant past, Samurai Jack style, to a year almost unrecognizable to our own. 2018 and meet a 16 year old a bucket of jake now this version of jake gotta admit not very based he just recently started his record collection it consists of a few choice gems like 21 pilots blurry face panic at the disco's death of a bachelor and fallout boys mania and you know what 
I don't care. There's a banger or two on some of those. I don't give a shit. I'll die on those hills. But my point is, I had a very narrow view of music. Until one faithful day, where the artwork of a newly released single would catch my eye on my top picks for you. A little song titled Connected by Love. This song had an aura around it. It was so hypnotizing. Maybe it was the pulsing robotic bass played throughout her, the emotionally raw trembling vocals, or the bizarre yelping church choir to punctuate every chorus. Spoiler alert, this song would end up as number 16 on my top picks of 2018 on Spotify. But this song sent me on a downward spiral of Jack White finding so many songs that I love to this day, like Lazaretto, 16 Saltines, and that Black Bat Licorice all appearing on my Spotify wrapped. But wait, I thought to myself, what's this other song on here? If my mind has not been blown enough, this track introduced me to the double-sided single concept. Thus, I heard Respect Commander. And this one is even more wacky than Connected by Love. It starts with this bluesy, hard buildup, but it transforms into this hip-hop breakbeat song using the same instruments? What? But then it becomes bluesy again, slow and moody with these distorted vocal screams like a performer at a late night open mic is absolutely losing it. And I was mesmerized with what I was listening to. I've never heard music like this before. What the fuck is this? I was firmly on the Jack White train and I was excited for his upcoming album, which would be announced with the name and artwork Boarding House Reach. If I wasn't intrigued and excited by the single sound and the artwork, I was obsessed when I saw this album cover like, bro. I love this. Fun fact, if you cover the mouth of the woman on the cover, it's Jack White from the nose up. And that's a fun little fact for your bitch ass. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm so hostile today. But anyway, Connected by Love and Respect Commander would not be the only servings and portions from Jack's boarding house reach. He would then release the single Corporation. And this is when my sonic curiosity was piqued. All three of the songs leading up to the album's release sounded not remotely similar at all. They were all completely different genres and completely different styles, with the only similarity being that there's guitar in some of them and Jack White is the mastermind. Corporation is this triumphant protest song, huge guitar spikes, this driving percussion, and a bongo for some reason. And it has more schizophrenic ramblings of Jack White starting his own corporation and taking it to the top, buying all the empty cars and making one giant army. The song gets to a point where we just hear screaming like, great googly moogly, what is this? Yet another song was released, just a few days before my 17th birthday in fact, over and over and over. I cannot stress how completely different each of these songs were. Over and Over is a straight, quote unquote, classic, White Stripes-esque banger. This was number three on my Spotify rap for those of you keeping score at home. The riff flops its meat on the table and says, yeah, run the song, get ripped, do it pussy. The electric guitar riff is so heavy, the drums complement the vocals and instruments amazingly. I also love the message here of Jack White feeling trapped, like he's holding the weight of the world on his shoulders and he's destined to do this over and over. And there are moments on the song that just disintegrate into madness, just sections where the instruments are removed for a bongo solo, a gigantic electronic bass, and some piercing electronic static. This song fucking rocks, one of my favorite Jack White songs. Rounding out the last of the singles released for the album, just a few days before its release, Jack White would spit out Ice Station Zebra. At this point, I was convinced Jack White made a bet with his engineers that he could make an album and not repeat a single genre. This is like a electro, funk, rock, hip hop song. The drums are swinging, the guitar is upbeat and light, I guess. I don't know how to explain this one, guys. I am really drawing a blank. In lieu of the words to properly describe this song, I think a line here explains everything perfectly. I live in a vacuum. I ain't copying no one. Amen, brother. I rest my weary eyes and awake on March 23rd, 2018 to the smell of a brand new Jack White album. I finished school and all that bullshit and I rush to my local record store. And this is an important plot point to the hero's journey. I grab my copy of Boarding House Reach and head to the cashier. Now a bit of context, I recently became chummy with one of the cashiers at the record store and he was very nice to me. We'd talk about the music that I'd buy, he'd, you know, kind of show me around the cool things. He actually bullied me into buying a vinyl record one day. He played it over the loudspeaker when I was in there and he's like, oh, you like that? And I heard it and I was like, Ugh, I don't know about that, but uh, I'm, what am I going to do? I made a cool older friend who enjoys music. I'm not going to say no. So he bowled me into buying uh, Jim James's Uniform Distortion, which uh, has not been getting the most turntable spins, I do have to say. But that's besides the point. The point is, I had an older, wiser music acquaintance that we could talk about the albums that I got. 
However, I'd place my copy of Boarding House Reach on the counter, show him my frequent flyer card, and he would say some words, something to the extent of... This? Uh, yeah. New, new Jack White. Yeah, it sucks. What? No. Over and over, Respect Commander and Ice Station Zebra were awesome, I said. Dude, this doesn't sound anything like his old stuff. It's all over the place, it's not cohesive, it's just... It's just too weird. It's not rock. The man then scanned my card, rung up my album, and placed it in the little bag. But hey man, you like what you like. He then handed me my newly purchased album, and I left the store confused, but intrigued. I sat down and played my brand new copy on my dog shit record player, which I still have, by the way. Here she is. This is uh, my first record player. It is cracked and... A piece of actual shit. <laughs> I would then finish listening to Boarding House Reach, and I thought about the words that the cashier said. And I could not disagree more. I thought the singles here were mesmerizing, but the deep cuts in here were just as good and even more bizarre and atmospheric, building the world. Forgive my pronunciation. Abula and Akrasia is an early interlude on the album, but it sounds like it was plucked from the beginning of a movie scene. An extremely dramatic piano, beautifully suspenseful violins playing, and this old man just monologuing into a microphone. I hang on every word he says, even to this day. These are my demands. Still makes my skin crawl, and the punctuation. So with time left permitting, and while we are still sitting, may I please have another cup of tea? Undoubtedly one of the weirdest songs on here, and a good case for one of Jack White's weirdest, is Hyper Misophoniac. I'd skip in the story a bit, but later I would learn that this is where people gave up on the album because it was just too weird. But dude, I think this is my favorite song off the album. It has this breathing, screeching, robotic synth exclusively in the right ear channel, and it breaks down to these jazzy piano keys, meanwhile this groovy bass line plays underneath it. I implore you, this song must be heard to be believed. Everything You've Ever Learned is another mind-boggling song. It started with this electronic bubbly bass with this, like, Willy Wonka-esque twisted kid shower commercial voiceover guy welcoming the listener to Everything You've Ever Learned. Sponsored by my Patreon. <laughs> That's the first 30 seconds, and then the song explodes into this high-speed chase percussion with dramatic electronic piano chords and Jack White screaming like an evangelical priest selling his audience hope, and the song just explodes again. This one song is such a trip. Bro, there is so much diversity in this album. It is insane. The last song I'd like to highlight here is Get in the Mineshaft. Jack White, again on his monologue shit, over dramatic violin telling the story of him entering an abandoned house and finding and learning how to play an old piano. The song drops and devolves into this robo-funk banger, complete with daft punkian vocal auto-tuning and a farting bass line, and I swear to god he samples the sound of a straw, like when you get a McDonald's Sprite like up and down and makes that Bro, what the fuck? How the fuck did the Seven Nation Army guy make this shit? It's so fucking weird! Cutting to the chase, I was hooked, but after I finished the album, the words of the record store employee echoed in my head. Why do people think this is bad? And that's when I found a beautiful thing, something that would ruin my life and save it at the same time. Internet to music discussion. Uh. I had to hear what people thought of it. A lot of mixed reviews, this was an extremely divisive album. <coughs> Pitchfork. <coughs> I recall stumbling across a small YouTuber talking about the record, and I remember thinking, well, that's a stupid color flannel. Hope it likes the album though. Divisive as it may be, this wasn't just a great sounding album to me. This wasn't just genre expanding to me. This opened my eyes to what music can be. It can be anything you want. And that mentality has stuck with me through a lot of my life. The most fun and interesting things that you can do in life is doing what you want to do and finding success because of it. And that's what Jack White did. This album is a trip. I do not recommend taking any mind altering inhibitors and listening to this music. If this has sounded at all interesting to you, and you don't want to commit to the entire album listening process, I recommend you listening to the song that was released just a few weeks before Connected by Love came out. It's treated like a song, but fuck I wish I found this before I listened to the album. Servings and Portions from My Boarding House Reach. It's on all major streaming services, and it's literally every song on the album in chunks in this distorted preview song like you're channel surfing. It's an incredibly crazy listen and I recommend you checking it out if you don't want to commit to the entire album listening process. But if you listen to it and if anything catches your ear, 
And I have some good news for you, because there is a longer version that I just made a video about. Jack White is such a weird fucking dude that he managed to create the most uncohesive album of all time, but he made it feel so complete. Boarding House Reach is an important album to me that I will not soon forget. Even if you didn't enjoy it, I hope that we can come to the conclusion that this is indeed something special. Something so out of this world and just far-fetched that the man who created such hits like Seven Nation Army and was the mastermind behind the White Stripes would create something so mind-boggling like Boarding House Reach. And if nothing else, you gotta respect that. Thank you for watching. What a wacky piece of music, am I right, guys? If it's not blatantly clear by all the videos I make, but I think you should check out this album. It's kind of like Chinese water torture, though. Like, how long can you listen to it before you just break and then you start enjoying it? Go listen to Boarding House Reach, and in the comments below, let me know what you think. I think this one, apart from all my other ones, maybe Trout Mass Replica, but it's a very divisive album, and I love hearing people converse about extremely divisive music. And the reason I fail to mention, like, any of this uh, genuinely, I just want to switch things up, just try something new. So, it's an experiment. Was it successful? I don't know. As a bug flies into my eye. Yeah, okay, this might be a, this might be a one and done. Who knows? Let me know what you think about this. It's just me trying to diversify the content a little bit, because fuck it. Go check out the Patreon. I post there a lot between main channel uploads, and one of my series that I have there is I review music requested by my patrons. Here's a clip. Push a T, it is almost dry. Guys, Push Your T, Push Your T, Push Your T is back, baby. Brand new album, co-produced by Pharrell Williams, The Happy Man, and Kanye West, The Very Unhappy Man. I was excited. I'm. Who's not excited for a new Push AT album? I was a really big fan of Daytona, and that's all I really delved into Push AT. I think his uh, features are incredible. So I was hyped for a new Push AT album, and we got this with a very beautiful album cover to boot. I don't know if beautiful would be the word I describe this, but I enjoy it quite a lot. So I mentioned Daytona, and uh, I feel very similarly how I feel to Daytona to this. If you'd like to see me in a more weekly format, I have the Good Enough podcast I do with Jackson Burns and Luke on Demand. It's a couple of cool dudes, and we just talk every Monday at 1 p.m. EST, so be there or be square. But yes, I have said my piece, and I'm going to call it a day there. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. It does really mean a lot to me hearing the kind words and just seeing that people are enjoying my content. And as long as you remember that entering heaven alive drops in just a few months, then you're good to go. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and have a pleasant day.